guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about finesse jigs, talking about springtime fishing, how to adapt this into your arsenal. We're gonna start out talking about a true finesse jig, then we're gonna talk about a bunch of options, not just a finesse cut. We'll talk about finesse footballs, small casting jigs, a variety of trailers, rods, when to throw them, where to throw them, all of that. But to start off, the question that we keep getting is about a true finesse jig. So what is the deal? What is a finesse jig? What's its purpose? Basically, it is a, a typically a ball head jig, a true round ball head, fairly light wire hook, thus the finesse part of that. And then it's got a finesse cut where a normal jig would have a skirt that's laid back over Take the upper part of that skirt, you split it in two, take the upper part and you give it a finesse cut where it's got kind of that ball shape to it. And that is the traditional finesse jig. Pair it up with a small trailer and you're good to go. So what, what is the advantage to a finesse jig? What's its purpose? What do you do with it? Probably the number one place that I see people fish it is a round cover. Think shaky head anywhere that you would throw a shaky head, whether you're uh, fishing edges of cover, fishing dock pilings, fishing little rock edges, whatever it might be, anywhere that you would throw that shaky head, you can also throw that little finesse jig. Now really, you can throw it anywhere. That ball head is really good at coming through a, a variety of cover, not really vegetation, not really grass, but everything else, it'll bounce its way over rock, it'll kind of bounce its way through wood, it'll bang off pilings, does fine in mud, does fine in gravel. You know, it's just a good all around shape. But the bait itself, the advantage, let's get down to it. Why a finesse jig? Well, if you're throwing a shaky head, you can catch big fish but typically worming, you'll lean to the smaller side of things, especially if you're finessing with it, a little bait. A jig is almost magical. All jigs are almost magical in that they get big bites. Even a finesse jig, once you've got that guy paired up with a trailer, it's bulky enough, that skirt opens up, it flares enough, and that skirt it moves. It may not move when it's just laying on the bottom. You may not be getting a lot of movement out of it. But you ever watch a bass come down and just stare at a bait? Whether that's a bed fish or just a fish out in, in real life out on the bottom, they come down and they look at it. Well, bass move water, right? They have displacement when they move and it will move that skirt. There's secondary movement there. When you pitch a little creature bait out and it's laying on the bottom and a bass comes down on it, the creature bait doesn't move. But when they come down on a jig, the trailer doesn't move, but the jig itself, the skirt material, it'll move in that water. As that bass moves, that water will push that skirt and that skirt moves. That creates secondary movement. Primary would be you moving the jig, you hopping it, bouncing it, that's primary. But secondary is just that skirt flowing on its own. Secondary movement is the difference between fake and real, right? A crankbait kicks through the water. Well, the real thing kicks through the water, but the gills open and close, the scales flash, the fins flicker, right? There's secondary movement in a real bait fish that a crankbait doesn't have. We do our best to imitate it, but it's not perfect. That's why a bass knows the difference between throwing a little tiny swim bait out there and throwing an actual live minnow out there. Secondary movement. They can feel the real thing. They know the difference. Well, a skirt does a fantastic job of imitating secondary movement. Have I said that 18 times? I think we're pretty clear on it now. But seriously, the magic in a jig is that it just gets a bigger bite. It just does. Maybe not every day, but if you're consistently a jig fisherman, you will consistently catch a bigger average fish over time. It just happens. So the, the beauty of that finesse jig is that it's small enough that you catch little fish, but when you cross paths with a giant, odds are very high that she'll take a shot. 
And you know, Tim and I, Tactical Bassin, we are all about big bass. We are all about putting the favor, the odds in your favor every single time that you're on the water. We want you catching bigger fish. The jig, the jig is a fantastic way to do it. A big jig is a fantastic way to do it. But not everybody has confidence in a big jig. And they're not always willing to eat it. But a little finesse jig will get bit when that big jig won't. It'll get bit at the same time that the worm is getting bit, but it will get you a bigger bite. So, let's talk jigs. There's a variety of jigs that you can use. There's a variety of trailers. I'm just gonna tell you some of my favorites. I love that little finesse jig. You actually saw us throw this a ton this winter. It's not just a springtime thing. It's not just a dock thing. We were fishing out on the, the ends of big long points with it, fishing it out in deep water. Uh, catching smallmouth and largemouth out of deep water uh, that just would not eat anything else. But you put that finesse jig down there and they were on it. We we're catching them up shallow on rocky outcrops, on corners, little funnels where the bait fish and the craws had to travel past. Well, not really the craws, they lived there, but the bait fish had to travel past. So the bass were up on their staging and then, you know, an easy craw meal comes down the line. They're not going to say no. Uh, but we caught a ton of fish on finesse jigs early, early spring this year, late winter and early spring. So the finesse jig itself is fantastic. Another one that I've never really talked about is this little tiny, tiny Kitek jig. I mean, it is truly a finesse jig, a little tiny football. It's a tungsten head jig, okay? So completely different uh, with a micro hook. I mean, how do I give you a size reference? Well, this is that true finesse jig. Look at the hook difference. It's ridiculous how little this jig is. I mean, we're talking about a jig that can be thrown on a spinning rod. Uh, and then I pair it up the little tiny, tiny trailers, uh, the little Biwa armored craw, the little three inch armored craw. Um, if you ever ordered these, you're thinking a three inch craw, you thought it was a big bait. You're probably disappointed because it was so tiny. Now you have an actual use for it. I mean, look at this thing pair up on here. It looks so good, it's not even funny. And that bait paired on there looks really, really good on bottom too. That combo is just a small mouth killer. Look at that little guy. It's awesome, just awesome. It looks so good on the bottom. It looks so good. I mean, it's got good movement. The, the profile is right. The whole thing is tiny. Again, smallmouth and spotted bass killer. It'll catch largemouth too, but it's a very finessey hook. You need to be really careful with your gear. Um, spinning rod, or you know what I actually use a lot to throw this? Is my jerkbait rod. Uh, six foot 10, medium power. Overall, a very, very light rod. Even though it's a medium, it's very, very soft. And it's perfect for this. Throw it on lighter line, eight pound, 10 pound. 12 pound at a max, but eight or 10 typically is the way to go. Little tiny guy. And then I also pair it up with a small e beaver, but I cut an inch of it off, an entire inch off, and just put that last little part of the body on that hook. And that small e beaver looks awesome on there as well. Both really, really good choices. Uh, three more that I really like. Well, actually, two more, and then we'll get to the third. I really want to explain that third one to you, but. Two other styles, gonna be a true finesse football, regular football jig, full body skirt, but a little tiny finesse hook. We use that anytime the fish get line shy. We use it in the spring, we use it in the fall, we use it in the winter. Anytime the fish are line shy, in springtime, you'll typically have a clearing of your water. It'll get really, really clear going into the spawn. Not everywhere, but in a lot of lakes, that's when this will really shine because you've been throwing a jig on you know, 15, 17 pound line, 20 pound line, all of a sudden the water goes clear, fish are line shy and it's, they'll still eat a jig, but you can't get bit. Well, you go to that finesse football, you drop down to a 12 pound fluoro as a leader or straight 12 pound fluoro and you're dialed in. Now these full size jigs, I pair with one of three things. I either pair them with a smallie beaver, but I only take off the very tip and then thread that on there. That little, um, Baby Menace, that's a striking rage bait. A little Rage Menace, but the little one pairs up really well on there. 
or a Yamamoto double tail grip. And the small one, a four inch, is my preferred. Uh, they just pair up here, we'll put this one on here. They just pair up so well. And again, all winter long we threw this. We already told you guys all about this exact combo, that finesse football paired up with that four inch double tail grub. And that little guy is just deadly. And then you can also, if you really wanna change that profile, I am not afraid to modify jigs. Let me trim this here. If you wanna change your profile with a smaller trailer, trim that guy down. I just took a full inch off that skirt. Look how much better that trailer shows in there. How good that looks now. Makes all the difference in the world. And don't worry about colors, guys. We get a lot of questions about colors. Keep it simple. Uh, you know that we use almost primarily dirty jigs. So my standard colors are super matte brown, which is a color that I designed years ago. Uh, Go to, which is this guy here, is probably my number one color. Molten Craw is a major player. But then, you know, obviously, if you live in a different part of the country, there are always, those colors are killer everywhere. That's what I take everywhere I go in the country. Uh, end up with that little, like, niche color for a certain market where somebody will want a little bit of orange in a jig and, and on a particular lake, say Cumberland, for example, it will make all the difference in the world to have just a little bit of orange in there. You go to the next lake, you don't need it at all. So there are obviously, you can adapt and try different things, but basically that green pumpkin, or a green pumpkin purple or a brown purple or a straight brown and black are all key, key colors that just work everywhere. They're just natural colors and you can pair them to, to a variety of trailer colors to get your profiles. Now last but not least in the jig category, this is a little compact pitchin jig. Oh wait, we skipped this one. That's a casting jig, which is not categorized as a finesse jig but it totally is you see that it's a light wire hook there it is next to the actual finesse jig it's a light wire hook that is a fantastic just all around jig if you're not fishing for giant bass if you're topping out in that four to six seven pound range i mean those are giant bass don't get me wrong but if you're not concerned that you're suddenly going to latch into a 12 pounder and she's going to take you into some cover and, and bend you out that is a fantastic jig because you have a pitchin style head or an arky style head, which comes through everything. It's not the best for grass, but it's borderline the best for everything else. And it does come through grass extremely well. And then you have that lighter wire hook that's easy to set. So again, line shy fish, you can pair way down, throw it on light line. Now back to that last one. This is a compact pitch and jig. So similar head style to that last one, good for everything. But a short shank hook. You see how sh short the distance is from the hook eye to the hook point? Say so compared to this guy, it's half almost the distance. Uh, what that allows you to do is have a full body jig with a pretty full body trailer. Like I said, we just take the tip of that off there. Just the tip. And then we'll thread this guy on there. I get a full body jig, full body trailer, split those tails on the Smalley Beaver always. Split those apart so you have more action. But with that little compact profile, it just gets bit when other jigs don't. Now, this is that Dirty Jigs version, but there are a handful of companies that have gone to this style of hook. Uh, and we'll link you a couple of those. I'm not just gonna show you this one. I'll, I'll pick out a couple of others that we've had success with and link those down as well. But that short gap length is really an interesting design. What I've noticed with it is you almost always peg the fish right in the lip. I think it's because it's such a short distance that the fish eat it and when you set, it comes out and rolls right at the lip of the mouth. And that's how you end up. So the hookup to land ratio is phenomenal. 
because not only are you hooked in the lip, which is a great place to be because you almost always punch clean through, but when you hook in the lip, the weed guard compresses. The weed guard itself is compressing and it's actually putting back pressure against the hook and holding it in place so that it won't come out. Jigs overall have a phenomenal hook up to land ratio because that weed guard will hold that hook, but that short gap really seems to be fantastic at keeping fish pegged. So a little bit heavier wire hook. If you're getting into bigger fish, you need that compact profile, but you're worried about getting bigger bites and having a problem then go to a compact pitching jig, you're getting that small profile, still full bodied, but smaller profile, but still with a great hook in it, strong hook, and you're gonna get a great hookup. Does that make sense? Different jigs for different things. The true finesse jig is great for getting bit and upgrading the size of your catches. You can go down to something like that tiny little Kitech jig I mean, you could throw this on light, light line, on a light rod, and still you're giving them that bigger profile. It's a, it's a different profile than, it, you know, if you're out there smallie fishing, it's a different profile than a tube or a little tiny creature bait or a Ned rig. It's going to get that bigger bite, but when you stick them, you've still got them on that spinning rod. You've got them on light line, so you can get those bites and you just play them out. It works really well. And then again, those more full bodied jigs with different sizes of hooks, depending on the size of fish you're targeting and the caliber, the caliber of gear that you wanna use. Whether you wanna be fishing with 10 pound or 12 pound or 15 pound line, you can adjust accordingly, keep your profile, but have your gear matched for the size of fish. Now onto rods. Again, I already mentioned you can throw some of these all the way down to a spinning rod. There's some great overlap where you can throw them on your jerkbait style rods, those uh, you know, 6'10 all the way up to like seven foot rods. And then you know, full bodied rods, just three of the rods that I personally throw these on are gonna be a Zodius 7'2 medium is really, really good for this application. Uh, you could even drop down to like the, the is it a 6'9 or 6'10 medium, which is a great carryover jerkbait rod again. Uh, we'll throw literally every single one of these. The one that you saw me catch almost all the fish in this video on is this guy. It's G Loomis, that's an 853C, which I believe is seven foot one, is that correct? Yes, seven foot one, medium heavy. It's a little bit stouter, but you know, Loomis as a whole, their rod ratings, I feel like the rods are slightly softer than what they say on them compared to other brands. So even though that's a medium heavy rod, to me it's not. It will throw every single one of these jigs except that little tiny Kitek jig. You will bend that hook out on that one. Um, I would drop down to that true jerkbait medium power rod on down, down to a spinning rod. Uh, and then lastly, just for comparison sake from over in the Dobbins lineup, uh, I would throw it on a 734 or a 743. So a 734, is a seven foot three four power. So basically a medium heavy, just all around rod. Um, and then a 743 is just a little bit longer, three power. So it's a medium, but also when it's an all around rod. I mean, essentially these rods are all in the same ballpark. You could throw all these baits on all those rods. It comes down to sensitivity, brand preference, uh, but these are all fantastic options. But my number one, the one that I really, really like to use is that, that GLX, um, seven foot one GLX paired with a Kronark MGL. Again, every single fish you saw in the video, that's what I was actually fishing with, especially in the winter time um, because sensitivity is so key because we were fishing down in deep water. You don't want to miss those bites. I mean, you're out there in the freezing cold working hard. When you get bit, you want to know it. You want to hit every single bite. That GLX makes a big, big difference. I use light braid, which allows me to use light leader. So I was using 20 pound braid and a 12 pound leader. Uh, and that, that was perfect. I mean, for all these jigs, even that compact pitching with that stouter hook, I could still set that on 12 pound as long as it's not on a super long line. If I'm fishing fairly tight, 12 pound would be fine. If I'm going to a long line, I'd go to 14 or 15 pound line so that I could hit them a little bit harder across that distance and still stick them good. I hope that helps you guys. 
I mean, as far as when to throw them, you're going to throw them everywhere that you would throw the shaky head, where you would throw the drop shot, where you would throw a full profile jig, where you would throw the Texas rig. It will work in all those applications, but again, you're getting that secondary movement. It's completely different. It imitates life extremely well. It fools wary, wary bass, and it just gets big bites. Try something different this spring. Get out there, pick up a finesse jig, pick up a handful of trailers, and go give it a try. You're gonna have a blast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, be sure to turn on those notifications if you haven't already, so every time we put out a new video, you actually get notified that it's there. But just remember, new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon.